good morning good afternoon good evening everybody welcome to this episode of the note closure show as always scott carson excited to be here today and even more excited because we've got some of our good friends are actually in the same state of texas today versus being all the way across in utah uh and we're always honored to have our buddy merrill chandler and uh his right arm Jessica Gessinger joining us this morning from uh, Houston, Texas, right, guys? Yeah, yeah, we're so ex- yeah, we're so excited, and I'm thrilled to have Jess on this episode. Usually, I'm behind the scenes producing. Yeah, she's <laughs> producing it from our end, and now we, since we're on the road, she's been on the radio um, three dates in a row. She has been backstopping. I mean, I would literally open open a loop, start answering a question, and then you know me, I kind of move <laughs> off into the into the in the weeds and the details of everything, and she's like. And here's Let's the rest bring of the it answer. Back to what we're talking about. Here's the rest of the answer. So it's been wonderful for her to backstop me there. And we've been in almost a week now in Houston, uh, and we've been doing several events. Tonight we're going to be at a at a RIA at, that we're going to be uh, kind of doing our you know fundability warrior uh, presentation and funding hackers. And so I'm just thrilled that she gets to be here with us today. Yeah, definitely. It's always a good time to hit the roads because you guys have really uh, not just hit one event, maximized your, your week here. So, Jessica, uh, I'm sure you uh, knowing Mary, you're probably the person helping plan most of these events and, and locations. She does it. She does it all. I there start you go. to finish. I, and then uh, what, I came out a day earlier because she had just because some uh, scheduling conflicts. And she's like, Meryl, here's the itinerary. Here's where you have to be on the Printed, first day without emailed, me. Printed, emailed, on his calendar, on his phone, emailed to yeah. I, 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 it was. There's it, no way he can get lost in Houston. But if you, <laughs> well, you, you can still get lost in Houston pretty easily. Yeah, 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 if you do see me we wandering the streets. We need to make a shirt that says, it's lost, called Jessica. <laughs> <laughs> and, not a for clients and students and i'm just lost in space going what if we so if you ever see me just like in thinking man on the side of the road (laughs) yeah for those that are listening that don't know uh this famous dynamic duo here uh meryl chandler is the founder and ceo of credit sense which is a credit optimization company that works with entrepreneurs business owners real estate investors to help them get use their credit to help grow their credit, to help them go out and get amazing low interest rate lines of credit from the banks, not only for your your personal, but also some phenomenal lines of credit for your business to help you go out and do amazing things. They're not a credit repair company. They're a credit optimization company. And you've been out preaching that this last week, if people are effable, which we, we like to say is fundable yeah. out there. So why don't we talk a little bit about some of the spots you hit. Why don't we start with the beginning and just kind of roll through all the different spots you hit. Because I've seen you at Quest. I've seen you at uh, uh, Mr. Texas Real Estate with Robert Rafino. I saw you last night speaking somewhere. Let's talk about some of the different events that you hit. Go. So um, we really thank you to Robert Rafino. He's really helped me set all this up and schedule everything and make sure there are groups for us to speak in. Um, and then we were on his radio show for the last three, three days. Now, him and Jason Bible, uh, him and Jason um, Bible have a Monday through Friday, every morning at 7 a.m. local. And um, I, they're soldiers, man. I don't, I, if I'm required to be somewhere at the same time every single day, I start bucking at the, you know, <laughs> so I start bucking. But um, yeah, they put yeah. together three day sh- three radio shows uh, day after day, and then th- four four events, yeah. four events a Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and tonight is the last night. So yeah, so um, tonight is the last night, and we are going to be at Noah's Event Center in Dickinson, Texas. If you're there, come out. If you can't make it, if you're in Austin, anywhere else in the U.S., we're also uh, streaming this online. Um, so you can start. Do you want to put the link? the comments i will i will definitely put the links in the comments yeah. a link so that you can register for the free web class it's an hour long and brad's doing that tonight since mm-hmm. we're going to be in we're, we're going to be in front of a group of people my uh our partner and uh, our our chief marketing officer and literal responsibly for building the fundability the business funding side of the business he's going to be doing that free web class tonight yeah. at uh, uh 8 p.m uh central time and so we'll no, put that 7 p.m Oh, 7 p.m. Central Time. See, see, see. 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. There you yeah. go. 
Um, and so um, you can watch, again, what we're going to be doing live. He will be presenting a web class nationwide. Yeah. And do you have, you have that web class pretty often, though, don't you? Have it, uh, yeah, every Thursday at 6 p.m. Mountain Time, 7 p.m. Central. Yep. Yes. And, and the link, we'll put that in the, in the comments, and then those can go back to their listening to this on iTunes or listen on the radio. You can go back to the website, weclosenotes.com, and check out the link for that as well, because we don't want to give it to people while they're driving or yeah. on the treadmill. You're <laughs> driving. Don't register while you're driving. Yes. <laughs> and we, we have to admit that it's been kind of exciting down here in the going from event to event. Because we've been going, there's been floodwaters. We've missed, we've dodged a few uh, 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 rain bullets. When it come, I had the wipers on, the most you could possibly turn on wipers and still couldn't see through yeah. the torrential rains. And we were driving 10 miles an hour down the freeway. And it was, it was insane. I mean, and it's been an adventure though. Yeah, the very first time I've ever seen, you know, the emergency broadcast is this is the emergency broadcast. Set. It's a test. Every time I've ever heard it in my life. During the presentation on Tuesday real. night, it was real. They were like, this is a, this is an Flood emergency warning. broadcast. And then they would say torrential rains, flood warnings, and they would tell you the areas to watch out for and where to get more information three times during in the hotel during my presentation we were getting notifications yeah. that we might as well get on noah's ark because this thing is that's why we're going to noah's event center because it, uh, it's we just floating off. we're it, we're going two by twos you know <laughs> on event center because the floods are real <laughs> jessica it was like where did he pull that out of literally the expression on your face jessica is like that's funny <laughs> i'm i'm to figure out where he pulled that from. I'm wondering where he's going with it. <laughs> <laughs> now, one of the great things that I love having, uh, we're having Jessica on for the first time is Jessica, you, you talk with a lot of the clients and a lot of the, the network, but I love the fact, because I, I wanted to use this as an example, the fact that you come to an event, come to a city and you really planned out and networked with people on an event. And I like to use that as an example for what we talk about with a lot of our students who are buying in different markets. Hey, jumping on meetup, finding somebody who's got meetup groups in the area and helping you really plan to maximize your, your event. Cause you've had different meetings. You haven't just been on teaching. You've had yeah. meetings during the days as well too, right, Jessica? Exactly. So when we um, planned this trip, we knew it was going to be a week long, but we just had the radio shows in the morning booked and then the nighttime events. And I, Meryl and I love to have fun. Like if we didn't have anything planned, we could go enjoy Houston but I wanted to make the most of us being here for a week. So we've been able to yeah. schedule events um, throughout the day, lunches with a few different people. Um, we're eating lunch anyway, so we might as well meet with some people here in Houston and do it in person rather than yeah, a some, call next week. Yes, some day. great movers and shakers, right? That we were yeah. introduced to by, uh, by um, uh, uh, Robert Orfino. I mean, it's been, we've been kissed in into the Houston real estate uh, uh, investor marketplace. Like I never thought we could, but she's the one who's responsible for making it happen. So I have mad yeah. props. That's good stuff. And you've, you've uh, I think you did a presentation at Quest this week as well too. Yeah. yeah. That was Meriden. one, they, they, they have their market, they bring in investors to, you know, people who have IRAs, what, what's the best way to execute on self-directed IRAs, things like that. And so I got the opportunity to spend a few minutes and just kind of, uh, share with them that to come to one of the events or go straight to the boot camp registration yeah. so that we can really show people how to intelligently leverage yeah. even their own money, much less other people's money. Um, another thing I want to add to that is it doesn't have to be a formal presentation. A lot of the things Meryl's doing are an hour long presentation, but Monday night he was at, at a, a bar and everybody was just having drinks. And oh, I thought I just stuff. went to the bar. That, that was actually an, <laughs> that event. Was an event. That, that was an event. Okay. Um, I thought then, I was just drinking with some buddies <laughs> that I found there and yeah, ended up talking lunch. about credit. <laughs> so you could do a breakfast thing. Get creative with how you meet people. It's not always planning a big event. Yeah. Well, as I've always said, you could literally go online on the meetup.com and start just an event yeah. to come hang out for dinner and or coffee or a, a beverage or yeah. whiskey or whatever it is, you know? That's that's the that's the beautiful thing. Especially in a major city like Houston, there's plenty of people looking, and Meetup will help drive traffic to it. And one of the things that we've even done is we've gone to different areas. Is we put up a Meetup meeting, and then we even got on Eventbrite 
and created an Eventbrite meeting to drive people to it just to, as a networking thing. Hey, come out, first drinks on me, you know, yeah. that kind of stuff. But leveraging. And then do Facebook slides to push it. Yeah. Easy. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Thankfully, she's here. I'm just, I, I'm just the show just pony. just where I tell him to go. <laughs> yeah, I'm the show pony. I just show up and, and do my magic, teach people fundability and how it works. But, I mean, she's as smart as I am when it comes to the actual tech. But she also has the added benefit of knowing how to run my life and run our business. So, mm -hmm. there you go. So, Jessica, one of the things that I love to have you share out there is how – and I'd love to hear this because this is a, we're obviously a little bit different than our normal our normal episode hey, with with Credit Central is great. I mean, we're going to get to when the, when are the dates for the next boot camp? Let's go ahead and get that out of the way for those who are listening. Yeah, so June eighth and ninth um, in Houston. Like, we're coming back here yeah, and we're doing so it live. If you would like to do it live here, we'll also be simulcasting it live from here if you can't make it out here. But yeah, June eighth and ninth, Saturday, Sunday nine or ten to six every yeah. day and registration is fundinghackers.com slash boot camp fundinghackers.com slash boot camp and whenever you go there you will see the next one so if, if if you're watching this after june you're going to see the july or the august or the september we always pull down the one date when we close out that event and we yeah. put up the next date so fundinghackers.com slash boot camp 97 bucks for two days of sheer we keep forgetting I, just and i were talking about this uh, on the way home from the event last night i just can never no matter how many times I do it, i'm always stunned when we, what seems to be old and and so vain to me you see them going are you, I didn't know this 20 years ago. Yeah. And it just renews my commitment to always be out there, always be teaching, always be uh, awakening people to the possibilities of what being fundable means, right? Are you effable is no joke. Um, and fundability will be your new favorite F word, by the way. <laughs> where, is, where is the vet being held on the June 8th and 9th? Um, we don't have a location yet, um, but when you register, you'll get a series of emails. Um, from now until the event, and we will be sending out emails with the location. It'll, yeah, it'll probably In be one of the places Texas that we've already area, done. Near the Quest building. Yeah. That's Quest. what I was going to probably say, if, it, if it's uh, offices or probably upstairs yeah. adjacent and Robert's yeah. offices, yeah. who knows what's going yeah, on. Yeah, they've been too. really generous with, make, they said, we'll get, hey, if you guys are coming down, then we'll make the plans to make it happen, so. Yeah. That's exciting. I might have to make a trip to Houston. I might have to come up. Would, come on. I would love to have you down here because first of all, yes, it is four and a half, five hours, but uh, our plans, it, it, our plans, it's crazy how we're, they're working out. We finish on Sunday night, right? I'm going to be doing um, two days worth of interviews because everybody is, are buying the registrations where I do their strategy session. So Monday and Tuesday, we're just going to stay here, do them live. And then, uh, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, we're at Homevestors in Dallas, and we drive up. I mean, it seems another like another week in Texas. Another, might as well just move here. <laughs> uh, that's weird, right? So it's, it's time so to get it's some all, boots. Time to get some boots. <laughs> we need to buy a truck and goshes and cowboy hats. <laughs> we're about to be Texans. <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna get an honorary. We'll get an honorary. Yeah. And hey, we'll we'll buy an Airbnb, dumb cool, and then just live here every. There you go. You, just, you should just reach out to Robert. He's the Airbnb so, king there. I know. For the most part. There you go. Pick something up, and then he can sublet it for you when you're not there. Or if you're going to do it in Dallas, have our friend Kristen Gerst do it or something like that. So that's there funny. You go. We'll remember that name. So it's been, but it's yeah. been, um, it just is such a reminder to me that how what, what, in truth we don't know what we don't know. Yeah. Bless, you. Bless you. And so when we watch people's eyes light up and they see that the, the, that their lives can be seriously different, just knowing the things we teach at the boot camp. Bless you. Yeah, I <laughs> love teaching and coaching. I just like teaching. That's yeah. what so, I like. so, so you guys also just had a workshop. Didn't you just have a workshop like two weeks ago as well too? 27th and 28th. Yep. 
Yep, two weeks ago. It's usually the last weekend of every month. Right. So 27th, 28th, and you had a, a I, you know, you were live streaming it to your funding hackers uh, Facebook group. I saw that commented on a few things, been through it before. Phenomenal event as always. Jessica, what's, what's always one of the biggest nuggets that you get? I, we've heard from Meryl about it before, but I always like to hear. There you go. Why don't you go get you a tissue and take a nap there, Meryl. <laughs> Jessica, what's always one of the biggest nuggets that you take away from uh, the, the, you know, the, um, the fundability boot camps? Yeah, so I've been with Merrill and Credit Sense for about five years now. Um, and I, every presentation I've already heard for this week, I still am like, I love that. I love this. I will never stop loving this five years later. Um, and one of my favorite things, and it might resonate more with me because I am younger, is I love talking to, teaching, and coaching people on how to start profiles for um, children, 18 year olds, 16 years old, even adults who have never had credit before or who are starting from ground up after a bankruptcy. That's where I love. I love the beginning of the process and coaching somebody all the way through, especially younger people, because I was lucky enough right after I turned 18. Tell, tell them your tip. Oh. Yeah, so I, when I, I've had a job since I was, so I've had a bank account with Wells Fargo since I was, 12 years old and I've had a job straight since I was 14 years old so not a lot of income going into it but a lot of time and by the time I was 18 and applied for my first credit card I had no credit obviously but I had a great relationship with Wells Fargo mark that word relationship yeah. building so as a 18 year old I was approved for a $2,500 unsecured credit card, whereas most people at that age and point are approved for 500 secured or unsecured or a thousand. And it's just much less. And so you don't have to add your kids as authorized user onto your card. In fact, we don't, don't, have, don't do that. Don't do it. There are but so many other their ways. Do start her, that. She actually brought that strategy to Credit Sense when, when she shared that. So you repeat that. Hang on a second. Thought. You guys repeat that strategy because I think you talked over each other. I want to make sure everybody hears that strategy again. So Jessica, what's that strategy? I mean, you started a relationship and at 18, you got an unsecured $25 credit card with Wells Fargo. What was the thing after that that you said? Do you, so uh, this answer stems from a lot of parents saying, should I add my children, young children as an authorized user onto my card to build credit? And that can actually hurt them more than help them. The okay. best thing to do is when they are young, open up bank accounts for them and have money going through it. Um, when they get a job, make sure they don't get overdraft fees, make sure they're responsible with it, but make sure as soon as they can, they start building relationships with top tier banks so that by the time they're 18, they're qualified and approved on their own merits and not because they've just been an authorized user since the day they were born. Yeah, authorized users actually cripple your credit profile building from from a start, right? When we're building a pro, an 18 year old's profile, my daughters, we did the similar thing, but but because the banking um, in in uh, Utah, we were able to get unsecured $500 credit cards when they turned 18. Hers is a smarter, faster because 25 is going to turn into a 30,000, 2,500 is going to turn into $30,000 faster than 500 is going to turn into 30,000, right? Mm -hmm. uh, it's called the velocity of credit. And we talk about it in the boot camp. but that is, it, she brought that strategy to credit sense and we've adopted it. Um, when, when people say, how should I prepare my children to have good credit? We uh, out of the gate, it's build three relationships yeah. with top tier banks and keep money, it doesn't have to be thousands and thousands of dollars, but keep money going through those accounts and it will build that relationship and trigger the automatic yeah. underwriting software. This strategy also works if you are just coming out of bankruptcy and you're in the dumps. It's a slow crawl out of it a lot of times, but the best thing to do is start positive relationships again and just start building up that trust and that relationship from the ground up. Would you recommend somebody, and how detrimental or good or positive is this, if somebody's basically, you're at 18, or they're coming out of a major credit wipe like a BK, of 
taking 500 or a thousand bucks, going to a top tier bank and doing like a, a secured credit card on a thousand dollar deposit. Yeah. Is that a valuable credit, uh, credit building thing? Yes, that absolutely is what we recommend. Um, if, especially for the like profile builders younger, if you have a fit going from ground up and had a bankruptcy, you might not be eligible for that, depending on what was included in your bankruptcy. If that's the case, go as high as you can. If tier two lenders, which we talk about in the boot camp, if tier two lenders is as high as you can go, do that. Because as soon as you get past the hurdle of seven years, or as soon as you kind of get out of the weeds, you can jump to a tier one bank. But don't start at the bottom of the totem pole. Go yeah, as don't high get as you the can. premier, first premier credit cards, the Amid G banks, the first, uh, yeah, first yeah, credit first, credit, credit first one. banks. Those are actually, uh, predatory. We call them predatory. They're technically subprime, but they show up on your profile as subprime and you get what are FICO calls negative indicators by even having those accounts. And we can complain all we want and say, yeah, but I don't have any other choices. You do have choices. Go to the damn boot camp, find out how to stop stepping on the landmines that make you, that crush the soul of your personal credit profile, whether you're building mode, you're rehabbing mode, um, real estate investors, sometimes you have to re rehab your, your credit from the ground up, right? Like Justin's yeah. saying. So there are strategies, don't choose the wrong ones. And we will tell you what the wrong ones are yeah. at the boot camp. There's also strategies, <laughs> if you're right on the edge of bankruptcy, that we can help you put in place so you have a soft landing rather than a hard fall on your face. And it's a lot easier to build up from a soft landing than a hard landing. Yeah. Uh, that's the absolutely. truth that's definitely the truth now you guys uh jessica did you travel with meryl to uh san diego for the magnify your wealth summit too i did we had a great time at that event and we're actually going again in november yeah the first words out the first words out of um aaron's mouth was i i've been i've known you forever but the reason why you're on my stage is because Scott voucher for you, um, uh, George Antone vouches for you. That's why you're on the stage. I didn't know what you guys, this is awesome. Will you come back in November? And we're, uh, first words out of his mouth, will you come back in November? Our, our crowd's bigger. You got to teach my people this. And we're like, okay. We did. Uh, so funny. I didn't know what you did. I didn't know it was this. So funny. That's funny because it was, it's just hilarious because. That's why we brought everybody together in December. It's it's a beautiful sight to see uh, you guys working with Jason and at Quest and with Aaron and, uh, and George has known all you for a while. But you, all, all yeah. thanks to you uh, and that little I call it the conclave, right? Mm -hmm. Gather all of us together in the same room. Scott, I got to tell you guys, Scott is the greatest connector I've ever met. Oh, yeah. First of all, he's brilliant at what he does. And then he says, hey, let's get let's get a few subject matter experts together, some really some hitters. Which all benefit from each other. Uh, from each other, right? And and it was it was back in December. And now we're down here in Houston because of that conclave. And uh, George and I are already working on a different project because of that conclave. I and mean, we've been friends before, but now it's like there was just this yeah. synergy of getting on there. So thank you, Scott. Yeah. No, hey. no, you just know how to put people in a room. That well, I know when I, I, you know, one of the best things I've been very blessed is, is to surround myself with really great people. And I'm not the smartest person in the room. I, I like going to places where I'm not the smartest person in the room because I always learn more. And I've always, uh, and I think it's one thing I, I'm going to put this out there to people that are listening, surround yourself with good people and good things will happen. I mean, that's what it comes down to. If you can give, and that's one of the beautiful things about the event we did in December was just bringing people together, the hazards, Tom and Tracy, you know, Christy and Elijah Whites from Serving Social and, um, you know, Quest and George Antone and Aaron Young and Megan Cole from, um, uh, you know, Laughlin. Laughlin Associates. And then, of course, Aaron's wife, Michelle, is just an absolutely wonderful person as well, too, with her, her coaching stuff. And then I, if I'm forgetting somebody, forgive me, but – and you guys. Well, there's just, Scott, Scott Carson was there. There was this guy, eh, Scott he, Carson. He was, he was there. Whatever, that, that's uh, just that idiot. All the folks were hanging out with, you know. But that's, so. that's the thing is it's it, – and that's what we love. And that's what you – I think ultimately entrepreneurs is we want to do. You're, when they say – our buddy George – I'm not sorry. Our buddy Greg Reed always says in five years, the, you'll be the same person except for the people that you meet and the books that you read. And we love the energy that everybody – you guys and everybody else that we talked about bring to the table because it's pretty – everybody has the – our students, our clients at heart, first and right. foremost. Yeah. 
And if you can, it's a whole servant leadership mindset. If you can make people successful around you, you'll rise to the top as well. And it's, it's, it comes back to you tenfold in some sort of fashion. So I'm, 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 I'm exuberant because I'm glad to see that these other guys are seeing the power of it and getting the message out. And it's adding value, not only to you guys, but it's adding value to their clients and a value across the board. That's really what you want as a mastermind of yeah. bringing people together to, to network on. And we'll do it again. Uh, we probably won't do it in Austin. We'll probably do it somewhere nicer. Um, Let's go to San Diego. If we, oh, want, we, could, we could do it in San Diego. I think yeah. we could try to do it out there in well, San we Diego. Could come to, we could we come could to Park City. Yeah, we could come to Salt Lake. Yeah, yeah too damn cold in December, man. Oh, if we're doing it in December, then no. What about but Miami? San Diego. We could do it in Miami Beach. There's a, a great place. We, actually, Steph and I were talking about that last night, actually, about oh. Miami Beach is not a bad place. We were looking at some of the hotels. Maybe Fountain Blue down on the... Uh, <laughs> that's where we were. We're that's where we World. stayed for FICO World was Fountain Blue. It was amazing. So... Oh, and we'll hey if we do it in December, then we'll be right off the we'll be right off the plane from FICO, and we can uh, new intel. yeah with whole new levels to take uh, take uh, all of our businesses to. Mm -hmm. We'll probably have a few more people this time around though too, which would be nice new new right. people to the the thing and, and and go from there. But what's the I think I love it now. You guys have gone. You've really changed things up here in the last six months of going from really revamping your whole business model of doing instead of doing a lot. I mean, you're still doing trade shows, so there's stuff like that, but the online boot camp, and I'd love to hear from Jessica first and then have Meryl jump in on this. Cause you've been around for a while and you've seen the business model change of what you guys have done. You've kind of had to revamp some things as the marketing change. Do you think that the, the on doing the online stuff has helped you out a lot more? Has it been valuable or is there things that you're seeing differently? I'd love to hear. Yeah. So, the boot camps kind of happened on accident. <laughs> um, we, well, Meryl was in Ireland in October and he was coming back to do an event and he's in Ireland and we're here and he's like, why don't we do a boot camp? So we kind of rushed and got it together. And so we've built it so it's a lot better and a lot more structured, but um, it's been great. I, the results, in the change in our clients has been significant much more um, grounded yeah. and, and and prepared clients it's to do what same, needs to be done it's a lot of the same information that we would give our clients right after they signed up as a new client and um, the difference is is they are choosing to learn it whereas once they sign up as a client it, they're on their own to watch the videos on their own do the work do the reading on their own but when we're sitting there with them for two days, able to interact, answer questions, help them do their worksheets, um, they go into the program and coaching so much more excited, so much more knowledgeable. It makes sense. They don't feel lost. They feel connected with their team. We have advisors on the boot camp answering questions. Um, so that's the biggest win from it is being able to connect with so many people, whether they become coaching students or not. Inside the Funding Hackers group, Meryl goes on and does Facebook Lives. People go on and ask a question. Like you said, you watched the, the boot camp a few months ago, but you check into the most recent ones because Merrill, as he said, he cannot speak in a straight line from A to Z. So every single boot camp, every single presentation is different. You're getting the same information, but it's different and it's enlightening every single time. But I'd love to see if you knew the geographic breakdown of your clients too, because you're getting clients from all across the United States versus been being in one city or stuff like that. So it's giving people more opportunities to learn without having to worry about jumping on a plane or you know, yeah. losing days of travel, doing it remotely, which is, which is yeah, great we, stuff for them. The, the, the online portion of it is really significant. We have more students become clients when we're in the room with them for the two days. Sure. So, there is, so we're still working that out. Sometimes that just means we need to teach more people the awesomeness so we can, so that we get the clients that we want. Even though we only do 10 new clients a month, we do want 10 new clients because that helps, that just keeps everything alive and moving and yeah. growing, right? Mm -hmm. But we don't want to, so if we have to teach 200 people to get 10 clients, that's almost more empowering than only teaching 30 people in a room to get 10 clients because what people call conversion, the conversion is less, but we get to get in front of more people to at least have them stop the funding failures. Because we can't teach somebody the, the, how to get through, how to 
draw a map to get through a minefield. We can tell them how to stop blowing themselves up, but they need coaching in order to find the exact funding path they need to be successful. So, if, so there's a trade-off. It's more people watching um, and, more, and, and fewer people becoming clients, but that almost empowers the audience more because there's more people just learning that there's another way and they can stop failing. Right. And to us, that's a success because uh, Meryl and I just love to teach and educate and just share what we know because we are so passionate about this. And so whether five people sign up or 10 for coaching, at least that information is out to a few more people in the world. So. Hashtag fundability profit. P R O F E T or P R I F I. <laughs> well, but that's, that's the thing. You're getting the word out. You're getting the, the gospel out. It's breeding. It's just basically spreading the word more. And I think it's a lot of people have to realize that the more people you talk to, the more you're messaging it out. And, it, it, and some people will say no, but I always take no as not now. Yeah. You know that's what I mean? so true. We have had so many people who went to a boot camp. It, it just is so much information. Some people just need to let it soak in and marinate for a few months and then be like, or even go try some of the things we tell the tactics we use. And then they're like, wait, this actually works. This is working, <laughs> right? Yeah, there is, uh, there's a lot to be said for marinating. Um, and people come up four years later and, and said, I'm ready for you now. And I'm like, well, we've been, we, hey, we've been waiting. We've yeah, been waiting. Like, I've seen you speak five times and <laughs> now I'm ready. <laughs> It's finally sunk in and stuff like that. But that's the thing is it's uh, you're doing guys are doing such great stuff out there. We get I'm getting messages from people, students of ours, clients, people are listening here, listening on the show and, and, and going from if you're listening to us on iTunes and Stitcher or any of our 20 plus podcasting platforms or any of our 17 different AM and FM radio stations across the country. I'd love to hear from you. I know Meryl and Jessica would love to hear from you. So you can uh, the website's creditsense.com. You can also Go. Well, go to funding, yeah, go to Funding Hackers, because Credit Sense is more like an on, online brochure. Sure. To, get, to watch the videos and do the thing, uh, register for boot camps or web classes, it's fundinghackers.com, and the boot camp is fundinghackers.com slash boot camp. Or like yeah. us on Facebook, Credit Sense. Yeah, if you like Facebook, we, we, we're going to publish everything there to, to keep you posted. Now, one th um, uh, an update on the book, I did spend some time um, uh, editing this week uh, as what we've uh, on our on our downtime and so um are you effable or just f will be I, it's on yeah. target for printing in the month of of may you There's should see this merrill got got his whole 30 inch computer monitor and put it in the shipping box and brought it all the way down here so that he could work on his book here because laptop just wasn't cutting it <laughs> yeah and, and i can understand and, that and if you want to put it in your feed it's um to reserve a copy of the book, um, it'll be free plus shipping. Um, to reserve a copy is tiny.cc slash Merrill's book without the apostrophe. Merrill's book. Tiny.cc slash Merrill's book. And you can reserve a copy there and um, we'll, we'll get it out to you as soon as uh, the first printing is uh, yeah. probably last week of May. I've, I've gone through and read it for edits and just help go through it. And it's not a boring book. It's not just technical credit stuff. It's, it's Merrill's personality in a book. <laughs> and, and remember the great hey, I don't know how he did it. It's yeah. not boring. It's totally him. <laughs> so remember, thank you. Oh, thank you. <laughs> remember the great reveal when we were all around dinner and everybody had to share that thing that, you, that most people don't know. So that is in the book. It's, mm -hmm. it, I, I, it's. You really, you did really open up, you did really open up the kimono for that one, didn't you? Yes. Well, if we're going big with our UF poll, I just said. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. When, once you've heard the stories and they won't under, they won't completely enjoy the irony of the, uh, of the origin of credit sense and fundability hacking um, without knowing, uh, without excited. reading the book. So it's all, it's a tell all, reveal all, make the magic happen uh, 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 tome. Well, but I, 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 we won't give away the secret to that. But the thing is, is still not letting something like that stop you from going out and being something, not going out there and, and helping and adding value to things. I, I like the story 
I don't know if you shared this, uh, Jessica's interview process. Uh, that's an interesting story as well. Not I in thought, the book. I, that will be in my book. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that will be, oh my word. Yes, that oh, was, <laughs> yeah, you have, it's, we have a very extensive interview process. Well, well, well we anymore. used to. Used yeah. to. <laughs> We're coloring more in the lines now when it comes to um, bringing on a professionals to uh, be our, our clients' coaches. Um, but when it came on to bringing on people who would end up being partners in the business and like li life and just life, and lifelong ability to see the vision and and uh, support each other regardless what storms come up, that it's a unique you. interview process. Yes, it is definitely a unique interview process. We'll save that for another time as a uh, a lead in to a future episode here for everything on there. Um, one of the things that I, I love what you guys are doing is just the fact is that you're just spending time with people. You're just really helping people get away from their, I think a lot of people have hashtag credit shame. Where they shame themselves. Credit shame. You know, um, I mean, that's an obvious thing for most people like, oh, you know, especially when you look at what's happened in the last 10 years, people, many people have gone through foreclosures, short sales, bankruptcies. They've gone through the big D and we don't mean Dallas, a divorce. Yes. You know, they've had... Uh, judgments or foreclosures against a record because of everything that happened there. And that's just really become like a badge of honor or a credit scar. And as we all know, chicks dig scars, right? Uh, or the proverbial aspect yeah. of things. So on that note, I will be the first to say I didn't always have perfect credit. So when I started at Credit Sense, I had good credit. But then I got in a really bad car accident and I was in the hospital for about a month and then rehab learning to walk and just function again um because i was totally broken and so during that time i had a ton of medical bills and then really long story short because insurance is in a different state they said they paid it they didn't that actually ended up as a collection on my report so i i've been there and i can relate and i came out of it too and now i'm on the other side but i've definitely been there yeah and we're not perfect <laughs> The, the beauty of this is that there are, uh, uh, we've been changing, uh, this came to me last, I think it was as early as last week when I was thinking of what the cover language needs to be for the book. And uh, everything is changing. Our, our commitment, our vision is to change the, the conversation from good credit, bad credit, to fundable, not fundable. Because there is no credit shaming if you're, just not fundable because you can be fu not fundable and still have 800 plus credit scores. So it puts a lot of people, a and lot more people, them. nobody shames the 800 plus credit scores, but they feel bad themselves that they can't go get a $50,000 line of credit. Exactly. So we're in the unfundable category. Everybody's rubbing shoulders because they just don't know the rules, right? So now instead of having good credit, bad credit, and the only thing you can do with bad credit is credit repair BS, man, that is, we are not, playing that game anymore it's are you fundable or not fundable we're changing the conversation and we're, we're committed to removing credit credit shame there's yep. no there's no cause for it that's such a that's a great great nugget there for everybody to realize that you have to re it's reshaping the credit game is what you really are doing i mean you've got we've talked about before but going to fico world and being there at the right foot of all the fico gods and understanding what's going on and Understanding the the true inside game uh, rules to the game of credit, it's it's a different thing than most people don't know. Um, I was talking with somebody, uh, actually our guest yesterday, Rachel Marshall from the Money Advantage, um, talking about and actually a recommendation for you guys to be speaking on one of her podcasts as well, because they do a lot with helping their clients find more lines of credit and things like that, or trying to find more cash flow um, through like the wealth management. And I think it'd be a great guest for you guys as well on there. And they were, she was excited to hear about it from you guys as well, too. So uh, talking about how, where was I going with this? That there's a lot of unknown things out there, people. I mean, like the whole thing about people think that sometimes, oh, hey, I've got, uh, I got a chunk of money. I'm going to pay off my house. Okay, well, no, that's not necessarily a good thing to do. Stop, stop, stop. Go to the boot camp. Find out what to do, not just with the money. Let's pay off the house, but let's do it in a way that FICO says, hey, you're awesome, and we're going to give you more money. Let's learn how to manage that and working those, working those um, rules together, working those techniques together 
define stuff. That's what really you want with a goal, with a, a true dream team of people. And that's what, that's one of the beautiful things that we love about the podcast here is we're trying to bring really great individuals together. You guys being a regular contributor, Aaron, you know, we had a great conversation with George Antone last week. Jason Bible was a guest on the podcast last week as well, too. Uh, just trying to bring great people together. You know, we had Derek Long, Nathan Sung on, uh, on last week as well, talking about building generational wealth and starting kids off sooner than later. Uh, leg- legacy plans. Absolutely. Legacies. That's what you have to do these days, people, because it's a different, it's a different time out there. Nobody is out there watching out for you. You have to watch out for yourselves. If you think that the yahoos that we elect in the state reps and senators and people going to Washington, D.C. are out for you, no, they're out for themselves, no matter who you, what side it's of the – Go ahead, it's Carol. Literally a, a, it's literally a circus. <clears throat> when you think of any of those things that where you're not focused on building you and your family and your loved ones and taking care of your own, everything outside of you in one form or another is a circus. And it, it, it can entertain us for a minute. We, I certainly don't take it seriously. What I take seriously is making sure in our venue, everybody knows the rules to play this funding game and then build your families, build your beloveds, build the opportunity to, to take care of everybody in your life now and in the future. I'm all, I'm all in, uh, we, we have that at Hello. My, my partner in the business and co-host in so many things is 20, to almost 23 years old been with me for five years do the math she started when she was 18 and we've typically hired younger persons because older persons are stuck in the old credit and funding paradigm and they're like okay so what do you do what about this mortgage and i'm like no no you're not listening i i cleaned house four years ago with all, all old school old guard type individuals started hiring uh, millennials because They didn't know, and many of them didn't even care about credit, but they were fascinated about putting together like the puzzle pieces and assisting others, right? They're, they're badasses now. Yeah. And that's what, when I look at life, it's a really a puzzle. That's what it comes down to. We have so many different puzzle pieces to what we have to do. And this is just not on real estate investing. This is just not on note investing. It's all the different puzzle pieces that fit together. You know, that's why I love about, uh, like Aaron's aspect of putting the entities together and making sure you've got asset protection, you guys bringing on the lines of credit and the fundability side to be able to go get more funding for more note deals or more fix and flip deals or more rentals yep. like what Jason and Robert are doing and then bringing in George Antone to help leverage some of that stuff that he does with finance.com to really help you compound some of the things that you're doing with the banks and the relationships to really drive home and build wealth on that. Cause that's what really what it comes down to. Yes. I love, Note investing, I love real estate investing. I think it's a great way. I think it's the best way to build wealth, but you've got to have the other things in place. I hate to say this, but you've got to have got to have almost your ducks in a row. Do I have my rubber duckies up here? Yes, I do. <laughs> That's what you've almost got to have your rubber ducks yeah. in a row. I like them. We say that all the time. You've got a lot of people have personal trainers, life coaches, spiritual advisors, financial advisors. Let us be your fundability advisors. Let's just, we're not going to, we're not a one-stop shop. We're not going to run the show, but let us do what we know how to do best. And yeah, let us tra- train you how to play the funny game like NBA pros, right? And then you go out and play the game. That's on you and your talents and your gifts. But man, you cannot be, you got to know that there's such thing as, um, as uh, playing the game incorrectly or fouling out yeah. you can foul out all the time and not even know ah, how did that happen because we're here for the long haul we're gonna coach you teach you once you're up on your feet and playing like a professional borrower then we're your hype team and we're motivating yeah. you and cheering you on and being so excited for all of our clients successes and their wins and so we don't just teach you and then dump you we're there for the long haul yeah we got a, a i think it's a 12 month old client just took down a $1.1 million credit line. Uh, it was a property acquisition line, first time out of the gate. Spend his time in the velocity of credit, just barely picked up a $1.1 million capital ac- or a, a, a property acquisition line. And it was like, this is awesome. so awesome. I, I, yeah, but needless to say, we have fun. Wow, that's great stuff there. That's phenomenal stuff. Uh, love to hear those kind of stories. Um, 
So one of the great things out there, $1.1 million line of credit. You know what they're buying with that? Commercial piece of property, residential property? Uh, it's, it's residential fix and flips. Wow. So they have that to fund their acquisitions. Do yeah. you know what kind of interest rate on that line of credit? I believe it was six and a half. Oh, that's stealing money there. They could, they could literally lend that out at 12% and be a hard money lender too at 13 and make 200% return on their money. So many possibilities. Yeah. So but it wasn't easy. It didn't just happen in 12 months. You have to work for it. I yeah. With anything in life. But they did. Uh, but the thing is. But it's that, obtainable. Yeah. What Jess is saying is that you, the, by the long haul, is that this is not get rich quick. But this is get rich permanently. And once you turn, yeah. you, once you turn the corner, once you see and, and sense that you are in charge of your financial destiny and the, and the moves you make, the behaviors you manifest you get to what it's pavlovian right you, you you behave a certain way you get better scores you make more money you're like hey it's worth behaving that way well lenders like that too and they'll give us more money so it, it does take work but i'm telling you with this guy it, it's like a it, it, it's a uh, it's a five-year reapplication he doesn't have to do anything for five years if he behaves himself and does it well and we're even teaching him how to use it to grow that line that's awesome. So they basically compounds and that grows to multi-million dollars instead of just $1 million and stuff like right. that. I think his, that outfit goes to $5 million in total um, it is the highest his line can go. And we're going to teach him how to use that line so that it just triggers every single underwriting opportunity to get more money. Now, quick question for you. With the increase in the different non-prime lenders out there, are you starting to see hiccups by people maybe that are – have some of those non-prime loans or does that reflect on a, a mortgage application? Does it reflect on a mortgage uh, credit listing of any sort if they've got a subprime lender or you, or does well, it not show that? Subprimes don't count like in mortgages. Subprimes, um, because if you're picking up B or C paper, um, that's not being reflected necessarily. Um, I'm not aware yet of FICO downgrading a score if you're in a if you're picking up a b or c paper because it is fanny back and if it's if it protects the lenders then uh, fico's okay with it right so since it fit, now if it's a portfolio loan and it's and it's off book and it's it's going a little wild uh i don't know even that it, fico right now is counting it uh, is downgrading that Okay. that score as well um, but you can get your consumer loans and consumer accounts those all have a negative impact you know a consumer finance accounts and we talk about we do a deep dive on that in the boot camp as well to learn exactly what types of credit cards and lenders to avoid but i don't think any of the mortgages are in that are in that play okay that's good to know because we're seeing an increase in those companies that are offering that up as non-prime mortgages, 100% yeah. financing, you know, that, that kind of stuff. So We're back to 2007. Pretty close, yes. The carousel's starting to sing a little bit, <laughs> a little bit of movement there. Uh, so let's bring it back up here as we kind of wrap up this hour here. You're going to be, your next boot camp is June 8th and 9th in Houston, Saturday. Texas. Um, and we're coming back, and we've just decided that we're going to come back. If, if there's 20 people in the room, 80 people in the room, we're coming back to Houston. There you go. Good stuff there. Um, might need to get uh, my. Uh, uh, you, how long are you guys in town for? Uh, we're leaving tomorrow morning early. After, okay. So we have our last event tonight. We have a meeting this afternoon, and then um, and then we go and we're hitting some barbecue. Yes, Texas That's barbecue. Well. There you go. Good barbecue. Except Good. for my favorite barbecue in all of Texas is Deep Elm. Deep in Elm Dallas. in Dallas. It's not bad. <laughs> it's okay. Oh, okay. Okay. All right. So, so, so take, us, better, take, so take, take us to the next level. You know, you know what? On the 8th or the 9th, I might just have to do that. On the 8th or the 9th. Yeah. Perfect. You. you well, okay. We're well, send us there. Pinkerton's We're going to Pinkerton's tonight. To, tonight. Pinkerton is good. Okay. Pinkerton's is good. And if you have some place to we're send us. We're foodies too. So every time we're on the road. Oh, yeah. I, I'm a Rudy's fan. Some people don't like Rudy's because the commercial side of it. But I think it's good when it's in Texas. Outside of Texas, I can't vouch for it. But Got here it. in Texas, I think Rudy's is one of the better Rudy's. ones because it's just Rudy's a flexibility is good. Okay. You get. So, there, you know, there's all these smaller ones around town and, and things we, like that. We that like joints. We like off the beaten path. We like joints where you walk. With the place we had breakfast this morning total it was amazing the pricing was literally Shout out to robert orfino robert orfino um he sent us to a place it was this 
this little Korean couple that have, I, I mean, there's like eight, eight little rounds in, a, in this restaurant. The food, the food was priced for 1997. I mean, an, an entire sandwich and breakfast platter for two ninety nine. I was like, "What? So good!" So we're all so, about if you'd like to, I'm sure uh, they would be willing to offer. If you want to come to the Houston boot camp, just bring a hundred dollars worth of brisket and barbecue. <laughs> yeah, yeah. ninety seven dollars of barbecue. <laughs> uh, one thing that I've annoyed, I, I've been annoying Jessica. Is I. I when I come down here and I talk His to people, my, my southern voice comes on. So I, I don't even know if it's if it's Tennessee or Texas. I don't know All if of it's the above. I don't know. It could be it could be Kentucky. But it could be Kentucky. My, but my my southern draw comes out and it don't stop until I hit Utah again. Y'all 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 are having fun there. Y'all come back now. You hear? <laughs> <laughs> so once again, let's let's do this here before we wrap up. Once again, June eighth and 9th in Houston, Texas. Uh, website again for that is what, Jessica? Fundinghackers.com/bootcamp. Fundinghackers.com/bootcamp. It's ninety-seven bucks to get rock and rolling. You can upgrade from there with a couple different options. Uh, if you want Meryl to sit down with you one on one, go through your profile or get the replays or things like that. But $97, it's one of the most valuable investments that we have made, that I have made in the last year because I thought it was such a great boot camp out there. I sat through from the beginning to the end, and it's just one of the most enlightening um, two days that you'll go through. And if you are going to be financing anything, buying anything, or putting anything on credit, this your your future self will thank you for going through. The, no the joke. Team. And if, if, I, I got to tell you, uh, since I don't on doing the presentation, it's not a sales pitch. It, it ten minutes at the very end of the day, we just tell you what the coaching get catches it, let's are. Work together, if not, yeah, and, yeah, that's exact. That's okay. Yeah. You've just been closed. <laughs> if you get it, let's partner up and do this. If you don't get it, you'd suck as a client anyway. So well, let's part as friends. There's the close. We just <laughs> we just closed you. Da, 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 that's it. That's all, folks. <laughs> let's go eat some barbecue. <laughs> Good. Let's go get some barbecue. It's lunchtime. Yeah, exactly. Well, hey, guys, I want to thank you again, as always, for being on the show. Uh, fun episode, you know, just us talking, sharing some things out there. I think people like, love to hear that because uh, it's kind of our normal conversations. We're all over the place, laughing, having a great time, and, and, and really helping people take big steps in their life by just, hey, give them the truth. It's kind of like, hey, here's the tools. You, you're either going to use the tools or you're not. We can't force or hold a gun to your head to get it done, right? Well, it is Texas, so I don't think. I think we can hold a gun to their head, uh, right? No, still we can. Oh, still okay. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Well, hey, have, be safe, travel safe, avoid those uh, flooding overpasses, all right? And uh, go out and have some fun, and we'll see you in a couple weeks, all right? Well, Thanks. Be well. Thank you so much. Thanks, guys. Appreciate Bye. it. All right, everybody. That's going to wrap it up for this episode of the Note Closure Show. Like I said, check them out. You can always go funninghackers.com slash boot camp. Check out there if – the 8th and 9th don't work for you, or you're hearing this after that or right before that, they'll have the date for the next one. It's well worth you taking the time, either A, join them live in Houston, Texas, or jump in online. It's very interactive. They're answering questions back and forth on the Facebook Live. They're asking questions. You've got a community of several hundred other people that are going through, that have gone through the class to ask that are doing the same things. And like you heard from Meryl and Jessica, hey, 12 months from now, what would your business be like if you had a couple hundred thousand dollars, let alone a million like they were talking about with one guy, but a couple hundred thousand, 80,000, 50,000, how much more of an impact would that have on your real estate, on your investing? What could you do with that money at low interest rates versus having to give up half a deal on a JV or a 10 to 12% to another real estate investor who understands what type of returns they're looking for. So be smart, do yourself a favor, check out the boot camp. get signed up. It's very valuable. Uh, it'll be the one of the best investments you'll make this year. So until then, guys, go out, take some action, and we'll see you all at the top, everybody.